Hi, my name is Hilary McBride, born in Westport, Westport Quay, um, the original home of Major John McBride. And this is all my, well, my immediate family and cousins, first cousins and cousins of the child. And whoever here? It's I'm like Sean McBride and uh, my father was John from the Quay. Yeah. Um, and I'm given the, the watch and the stick, mm. uh, which were given from, uh, from my grandfather. To, to me, or to my father, and then to me. So you're, he, he was your major John, was your great grandfather. Grand grandfather. Grand grandfather. Grand two grands. Yeah. Two grands. Two. Yeah. And yours? He Say. was actually our great grand uncle. Your great grand uncle. Yeah. Great grand uncle. Yes. Great grand uncle. Yes. What's your name? Brenda. Brenda. Patrick McBride. Grand uncle. Grand uncle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Dermot Luddy. My mother was Mary McBride from the Key. Uh, I'm a great grand uncle as well. Yeah. My great grand uncle as well. Great uncle. And do you know much about him? Well, we were kind of brought up on the stories of emancipation and freedom and how it was won, and um, certainly the whole human rights and his son and what they achieved for Ireland. So we were very aware of the history and the background and the sacrifices that were made. And uh, did, you, did you know your grandfather? No, sadly. Yeah. Anybody know the grandfather? No. no. You did. You did, yeah. <laughs> and did he ever talk to you about it, Dermot? It, not so much, no. Um, when I knew I was about 10, 11, 12, that's the start of age. Um, my second eldest brother, Jim, grew up at the quay with Granda. Granda, we had a lot of children in our family, and Jim was the second oldest boy. He was hired out, <laughs> you might say, to my, my grandfather. He stayed at the quay for years. So Jim has a lot of, a lot of stories about Granda. But uh, my main interest in it is really that um, I kind of descended down through the trade, which was started early on, and then um, a third generation of McBride's bloody selling tea for over 140 years, tea and wine. And that's my kind of involvement in this. And what's your memories or your knowledge? Is it? Um, well, I'm a Yank. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, Not from Connemara, so anyway, go on there. <laughs> my father was from Castle Bar. Yeah. So uh, my stories are sitting on my dad's lap listening to uh, running about the quay or uh, out in Clue Bay or on Crow Patrick with their fathers and mothers when they were kids mm -hmm. back in the day. Your father, your great great grandfather was? Uh, my grandfather, grandfather. was uh, Dr. Anthony McBride, the county surgeon uh, in uh, Mayo. And his brother was Major John. Okay, yeah. Was he the first county surgeon in Mayo? Today? Yes, he was. He was the first. And what term was he there? Do you know the dates or the years? Approximately, the you know? Um, someone help me. Hmm. Yeah, before. Yeah, yeah right, right in there. Yeah. The yeah. 18, yeah. early 19. Yeah. 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 And did he ever talk to you about his brother? Um, well, I didn't know my grandfather. He was, uh, he passed before I was born. Okay. Uh, and my father immigrated to the States in the 50s, uh, had three children in Dublin, my older brothers and sisters, and then I'm one of the uh, others, the other four, there's a total of seven of us born in the state. So uh, not a lot of family around except for my brothers and sisters and my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. We'd come over or we'd have letters or there'd be stories of the cousins or the uh, uncles or the history that these uh, um, members grew up with. Mm -hmm. And do you have any mem memorabilia in your family? Do you have photographs or objects or items or have they been collected off you? After we bought my grandfather, we found his diary last night and in it, from the 20, whatever date, Easter fell on 22nd to the 24th, he had been in Dublin. And yeah, we have it physically there. And, and, you, and you just found it, that's we it? We found it last night, actually. I found it in the house. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it's recorded, the dates. Do you want to read something of it? Yeah, well, Good, good Friday, right through until Easter Monday, the 24th. My, my grandfather was in Dublin, but on the 24th, he's written here in no Dublin troubles, but he went to Belfast that day. Mm. So on the 5th, he's written in here along, he said, Uncle John shot. Yeah. So obviously it was quite significant. You well, know, that's, that's a, that's a yeah. significant little bit of paper, isn't it? Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. no, and where did you find that, in the house? Well, it went missing in the house, and then I, after, you know, when I, I found when Daddy passed away, and then it went missing, and then all of a sudden I searched the house and it turned up. Mm. <laughs> so I was, and what other kind of stuff was in it? Um, basically, again, Dermot, going back to Dermot, they had the tea business and, okay. my, gran and my grandfather followed 
in line with TPIS, and so then Dad, my mm. father, was the TPIS, and then Dermot took over the legacy, so the, the history has been there. And is there much detail in there? Is there a daily yes. entry in it, or this intermittent? Yeah, because, my, because my grandfather travelled on a daily basis as a, as a sales rep, he, he put all his logs in and where he was and what he did, and... Funnily enough, I think my own dad did the same thing. Oh, absolutely. He but did, you had to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for your... Oh, yeah. Yeah, those yeah. Yeah. Bookkeeping. Yeah. 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 Bookkeeping, yeah. Yeah, you where you were and who you had to go back to. What do you think about all this? In what sense, sir? In terms of what's going on at the moment in the country and... Uh, Oh, that's kind of difficult, isn't it? Isn't it, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's kind of reignited it for us all, like, we, yeah. we'd forgotten about it, really, you know? Well, you know, we could still be over, we could still have the British running, running Ireland, mm, mm. and thankfully we, we can make our own decisions. Mm, mm. And, um, even though we've made loads of mistakes. Uh, we've made a lot of mistakes. Go on, anyway, there's no other day's work. It's got to be better than uh, controlled by somebody else. Yeah, yeah. They've really ignited the whole history thing. What has, isn't it? A couple of weeks. Yeah. I mean, yeah. um, I, I didn't know exactly where we were in the family up to about three weeks ago. And mm. Gerald and my wife started investigating and, thinking, and making me investigate. And mm. I know I'd done a family tree on the ruddy side, but I hadn't really on the my pride side. So yeah, yeah. It certainly reignited everything, you know. I mean, mm. you know, and especially when you look here on the here and you see the old tea bags going back. Like the stuff years, there, yeah. like, you know, from, from yeah. over a hundred years ago where there were the old tea bags where they packed the tea in the bag, you know. And it's amazing now because um, where he defended, the, where he had his command with the Jacobs factory. And my last job, uh, before I was made redundant in May, was selling Jacobs biscuits as part of my, <laughs> my job, you know, so I kind of carried, <laughs> kind of carried right through, you know, the old Jacobs biscuits. Uh, for me at Easter we all went, we had a family reunion at Easter and thanks to Sean who coordinated us all and got us all in Dublin. It was about 50 McBride, extended family, travelled from America and it was fabulous. It was like an ancestral kind of group thing together, wasn't it, of all the different clans? No, but the GPO was kind of very interesting because um, uh, I think as Dermot says, uh, it kind of brought up the whole thing. And mm. A lot of people were interested about it, uh, which I didn't think of a surprise for so many people, young people, uh, on Easter Sunday when you come up into into O'Connell Street. Jesus, the number of people is unbelievable. Mm, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of kind of interesting. Were you all familiar with the circumstances of his, of his death? Like, we just kind of happened to walk into the factory and he got involved in this. And well, you you kind of asked earlier on. I think everybody in our families, like my family anyway, you, you knew about it. And you knew about it, yeah. From day one, you know, you knew, you knew about the connection with us, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you're all very proud of him? Yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think my father went down a different route with, with regards to, like, I think in the 70s when he started a horse show, and he would be yeah. that term, but they really wanted, they really, like, they went through tough times, so they tried to coordinate that horse show at the time, they were bringing the northern teams down, and yeah. they really wanted a new Ireland as well, mm -hmm. in the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. where, where people could feel comfortable coming to Westport, and yeah. I think it once they did the British team, but they became... That, the yeah, and it was, it, was, it was a hard fight to get them here, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. there was troubles back then, I mean, you know, there was... There was an ambush in 1980 and there was an ambush in Mulroney at the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And we were in Br by the British Army team down here and everything, you know. So it was, we changed times and, I, you know, I, we've always been proud, proud of uh, the McBride. Like, I mean, I certainly had a very close affinity with, with um, of course, with my mother, but with, with Don. Don, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was very close with, with, with Don McBride. Like, and he was the heart and soul of the McBrides in Westport, you know, all the thing. And, um, he had a huge dignity in himself as a person um, all through his life, which I think you can see through Major Johnny, you can see that kind of forbearance and stand, you know, the stance and the forbearance that he had, and I think that kind of came down through the whole family, you know, and, and if you look at, at, at pictures of any of the family now, it still goes back up through, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, you'd be very proud of it, and as we all grew up with the stories, all our lives, you know, on both sides, you know. But I think we always wanted a better tomorrow, I think, for the future. They were always mm. kind of thinking ahead. This too, the course of history could change, and it has, thank mm. God. Yeah. And uh, had, you, had you many uncles from your father's side now? Yeah, Daddy, uh, John was his eldest brother, and yeah. they always came down, loved to be very, very, very close. Yeah, yeah. Um, sadly, Daddy had two brothers, 
that were killed, Uncle That's Billy right, yeah. and Uncle Brendan. Accidentally, yeah. Yeah. I remember that. I remember hearing, I heard about that. Uh, I did hear about that. Uh, did you, did you mention that? Right. And then we don't believe who lived in America. Yeah. So all his family yeah. united with us. A few of them united with us in, in Dublin yeah. for Easter. Uh, yeah, Anna was down here in Westport a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And they're so proud of their heritage, even living in the US. They're kind of very much bringing the message down to their own children and the next generation. So I think that's a the card on there, on the, the call card. That was oh, yeah. my grandfather's call card. Yeah. And um, when when Aidan went to America, he brought one of those in his Bible, and um, Anna found it, and she um, she copied it, and she gave me a hundred copies to give out to the family. Mm. So that was nice. That was nice. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. Well, so, uh, <laughs> have you been to many of the events associated with this rising? And just came back from Camino today. Camino, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was very lovely, wasn't it? We yeah. thought, thank you. Do you know it's so beautifully done? I mean, uh, suspense forces did a fantastic job. Yeah, Treated so well, everything was so well run and dignified. And even the whole, I don't know about you, but the Sunday event was absolutely amazing. The Easter Sunday, the, the military. Mm. We, we never realised that the Irish army was positioned in so many countries throughout the world. Oh, it is. It is it's amazing it is. testimony to the, the Irish army. Yeah, and they're, they're, you know, the big thing about the Irish army, of course, is that they're a peace corps. Peace corps, yeah. yeah. Peace corps rather than yeah. a fighting corps. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting when you actually talked to the Americans, our cousins. They were wondering about the blue, the blue uh, hats. Brave, yeah. yeah. Explain that to the yeah, yeah. And it's kind of when you talk about it, then you realise, yeah, they're not really, they're not really an army like the Americans. So it's kind of a different, it's a different. Okay, guys, enjoy the day. Thank you.